Uh, good evening. Uh, sometimes when I'm talking, I get into a real southern accent. Southern America, and just it can be confusing. I hope it's not the case. I'm working on that. <laughs> I was in a bar the other night, and I was chatting with this lady, and she found out I was a comedian. And she says, oh, what do you know about Tommy Cooper? And I said, uh, uh he, he, he dead. And, uh, <laughs> and she said, oh, I must be terribly British and correct your grammar. I think it's he died. I said, uh, at first he died, <laughs> now he dead. Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Alexander Armstrong. In the news this week, at Westminster, concern grows about the level of investment in the new high-speed West Coast Line. <laughs> Undaunted by the hygiene scare at his restaurant, experimental chef Heston Blumenthal picks up the ingredients for his homemade chocolate brownies. And after the House of Commons boldly abandons 400 years of parliamentary tradition, the contest to select a new speaker begins. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team, a writer and broadcaster whose book Pies and Prejudice describes his search for the essence of northernness, while Adventures on the High Tees describes his search for Middle England. He is currently searching for a suitably annoying title <laughs> for his next book. Please welcome Stuart McConey. And with Paul tonight, a stand-up comedian who at a comedy festival recently wound up after 40 minutes saying, I could go on, but I wouldn't be as funny. The very words used this week by speaker Michael Martin. Please welcome <laughs> Reginald D. Hunter. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Stuart, here's yours. Uh, <laughs> some homeless ducks. Oh, um, a previous speaker turning into the current. Before well, and after. Yeah. There he is being ceremonially kicked out. Yeah. Order, order me a taxi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and off he goes. Ah, and he picked a lousy week to launch his new own brand single malt whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> God, what's this? Sam is that footage of him. Is, is he really on YouTube? Yeah. What's that? I don't know if it's a clue. It says Sky News in the corner. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, of course. It's one of the things you pick up when you've done the show for That's a few right. years. Is... <laughs> anyway, he's it's gone. A... Yes, he has. He's he gone. Has he's gone. history. But the important thing is the ducks. Yes. Because yes. they're fantastic. I mean, the detail of the expenses just goes on and on. Mm. Every time I think, well, that story's over, yeah. it's back. <laughs> and this morning, we had... Um, <laughs> we've already had this. At the Labour Party, they have sort of houses which they put themselves in. And the Lib Dems have houses which they put their children in. Um, and the Tories have houses which they put their ducks in. <laughs> <laughs> some, he's claiming for a second home for some ducks. <laughs> so Peter Vigors built a fake island for his ducks, which you can understand because ducks are notoriously incompetent on water, aren't they? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he took to it as badly as a duck to water, as the old <laughs> proverb goes. Isn't it? Hoisted by his own canard. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a picture of Vigors' Duck Island. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a weekend getaway for ducks. Yeah. <laughs> On the moat. Yeah, quick quack. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> I suppose the slow duck's out of the question. <laughs> so is that the. Um... <laughs> but there was another man charged £80,000 for checking up on his woods. So Anthony um, Steen? Yeah. We've got Anthony Steen here talking to BBC Ooh. Radio 4 about his trees. I've done nothing criminal. That's the most awful thing. And do you know what it's about? Jealousy. I've got a very, very large house. 
Some people say it looks like Balmoral. It's not particularly attractive. It just does me nicely. As far as I'm concerned, and as of this day, I don't know what the fuss is about. What right does the public have to interfere with my private life? None. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I mean, it's amazing. They just still don't get it. Just... What right has the public got to be interested in how yeah. their money is it's spent? spent. Yeah. And it's just jealousy. As you said, it's just jealousy. It's coppice envy. Pure envy. <laughs> 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 but see, everybody ain't got no wood like him. That's and, right. And That's right. we know that the people without woods they would be like, well, why we ain't got woods? He got woods. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, he, he might be right, man. You... <laughs> <laughs> well, Duck, duck Man Vigors, Woodman <laughs> Steen, and Moat Man Hog yeah. are all <laughs> stepping down. Uh, who else has stepped down this week? Yeah, well, I mean, at least they're doing the decent thing. I mean, all the Labour lot in the Cabinet are still in there, aren't they? Well, that's true, yes. Who it's isn't true. Gordon there? Brown said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a big clear-out, starting with... And then he had a look round, and then he said, well, maybe starting next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's Blears, there's Jackie Smith, James Pennell. What I love about him, it's always in the detail, it's just that not only did he avoid tax, capital gains tax, when he sold one of his properties, but he took advice on how to avoid tax, which was paid for by the tax bank. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Speaker Martin. Uh, would you like to see his re resignation yes, speech? Um, sadly, we are expressly forbidden from showing any sort of parliamentary footage in mm. this uh, programme for fear we might bring Parliament's reputation into disrepute. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, we've commissioned a professional artist to, to do a drawing, so there it is. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> this professional artist, how old was he? <laughs> <laughs> what other mistakes did he make in the job? How long have you got? Yeah, um... <laughs> well, he spent the last five years trying to stop people finding out about MPs' expenses. That's right. He resisted the Freedom of Information Act, he took legal challenges, he tried to put different bills through. At every point, he said, I don't want anyone to know about this stuff. Well, Because if know... it comes out, it'll, it'll be a scandal. And that's the one time he was right. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine, now this is a guess, but I'm guessing that these politicians who took all this money, they didn't just start doing this a few months ago. This has been going on for a strong minute. So, <laughs> all of a sudden now, it's a problem because everybody else broke. And people don't mind you stealing a little bit when they doing okay. <laughs> but when everybody else scratching their nuts looking what, what the next yep. thing gonna come from, <laughs> then it's like, he got too much. He got woods. <laughs> <laughs> But that's just my point of view. No, <laughs> I think that's absolutely right. It's a very bad time to be caught a downturn. Yeah, like if you know, right now if you're stealing, ease up a little bit, because. <laughs> 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 but when you broke, you just find shit to be mad about, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what did Harry and Harriet Harman say after the Speaker resigned? Did she lead the tributes from the House? She did. She said the Speaker's resignation is an act of great generosity to the House of Commons. <laughs> <laughs> Not nearly as generous as the House of Commons has been to the Speaker. He gets an 80 grand a year pension and uh, a seat in the Lords. Though he may not get that, because there's a number of people in the House of Lords mm. saying, we don't want you in here. Really? We know this place is discredited, but it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but, like, what you get when you become a member of House of Lords? Like, you get, like, a discount on food and restaurants or something like that? Or... You get 10% of sports equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, can you impress women with it in a bar? Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It'd be cool to be in the House of Lords, man. You just... You in a big old house with other men, y'all wearing bathrobes and yeah. no, no clothes on. And you just, <laughs> I and think you you've got some around. of the details slightly yeah. confused. <laughs> <laughs> you walk around the pool table and you go, what's up, Lord? Hey, it's you, Lord. <laughs> Did you say pool table? Yeah. yeah. You can't have no house with men in it without no pool table. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called snooker over here. <laughs> Okay, well, have your little English game. But anyway, <laughs> there'll be a table with some balls on it. Fantastic. <laughs> so what's the, what's the female version of the House of Lords? The House of Lords, yeah. Oh, so there's women in the House of Lords? Yeah, it's unisex. Yes, yes. Ooh, we gotta yeah, put on pants yeah. now. <laughs>
Ooh, I know that. Okay, all right. It sounds it's getting better and better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We may not even need the pool table now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Has a black man from America ever gotten into the House of Lords? Oh, I don't think so, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, hey boy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dream, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the way. <laughs> it should be quite easy. We had a bloke who used to come on this show quite a lot. He became Mayor of London, so I don't see any reason why you should have become <laughs> a member of the House of Lords. <laughs> what was uh, Michael Martin's last act as Speaker? Resigned, didn't he? That was it. <laughs> Just before. <laughs> Just before he did Just that. Just before. We well, know he's agreed tough new rules on expenses with party leaders. <laughs> he's really cracked down on the freeloading lifestyle of MPs. Uh, so from now on, the only expenses you can claim for are rent, hotel accommodation, mortgage interest, insurance, council tax, <laughs> gas, <laughs> electricity, and phone bills and food and drink. <laughs> so yeah, try sponging on that, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, they won't be able to claim for the future redecoration of a house they're moving out of in order to spend more time with the mistress they carried on with while their wife had treatment for cancer. So uh, that's, that's bad news for Tory MP James Gray. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should imagine he's just spilt his whiskey watching the TV. <laughs> 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 Jordan. Yeah. Jordan. 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 <laughs> Your obsessions are becoming manifest, yeah. sir. <laughs> I can think of nothing else this week. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about her and Peter Andre? What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Never I mind do, all this I, stuff. I think I'll come back together again, yeah. Paul. Do you? Honestly, I do. Do you? <laughs> I mean, Peter Andre just... I was reading in the paper, he just been crying and... Walking around talking about his kids and he crying and just and he's been devastated. He going, I just stop crying, man. Get your manhood back, man. <laughs> Do something, man. Just you know, stop crying to people. Go climb a mountain. Go bungee jumping. Try to have sex with Mike Tyson. Anything, man. <laughs> just stop crying all the time, man. How would you advise having sex with Mike Tyson? <laughs> well, you know. You you go up to oh, him. Yeah, you about it. You about it. You go up to him. Yeah. And you go in understanding yeah. full well it may not go the way you planned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what has Anne Whittacombe? Uh, she had subject, sex with Mike Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Anne, come on out. Is she our mystery guest? What has Anne Whittacombe offered to do if it would help, and it's not to do with Mike Tyson? <laughs> She's one of the MPs who's absolutely clean. She hasn't um, fiddled anything in any way. And there are... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that either. <laughs> like somebody opened the innuendo jar. <laughs> yeah, I wonder who that was, Reg. <laughs> that was not innuendo. That was, was not... full frontal talking about having sex with Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> I did not imply sex with no, Mike Tyson. No, no, no. You stated it boldly. Thank you. Yeah. She has, uh, she's offered herself to be a temporary speaker until one's elected. Surely in this day and age, shouldn't we get two speakers, stereo? I mean, it seems to be... <laughs> I mean, mono 300 years ago, yes, but now, come on. Uh, what does Gordon Brown need to do now, according to the Mirror? Resign? No, they've gone beyond that. Should he be left in a room with a bottle of whiskey and a revolver? <laughs> Gordon's only hope is to go for broke and offer an all-singing, all-dancing, fresh start. <laughs> I think Gordon Brown amazing, though, man. That cat, that, I mean, he's been taking a, a shellacking in the press for the last couple of years, and sometimes it seemed like he ain't gonna make it. Like, they gonna make force an election next week and get rid of this mug, and then he still be prime minister after that, man. That man, that man like herpes, man. He just, he don't... <laughs> <laughs> you can't kill him, man. Becoming my new hero, boy. He like Steven Seagal of British politics. <laughs> Uh, who else has had to quit this week from the Tory side? Back on the Tories. Yeah. Um, uh, David Cameron's political advisor, Andrew Mackay. Oh, Mackay, he's gone. Uh, he's part of that. Julie Kirkbride's husband. Yes. That's right, yeah. yeah. He'd emerged. He'd claimed over £140,000 for property he designated as second home, while his Tory MP wife claimed their other property was actually their second home. So, in fact, here they are together, he and Julie Kirkbride, and, uh, Mr and Mrs. We are slightly institutionalised because we get home after a day in the House of Commons and over supper, you know, what are you talking about? Politics and what's happened in Parliament. Well, we're not too anal. I mean, we do talk about other things. <laughs> Julie's constituency is in Bromsgrove in the Midlands, Andrew's in Bracknell in Berkshire. So where do they call home? The back of a car. Really. 
uh, we're, we're like Tibbalans. And, uh, and in some ways, I quite like that. This, this isn't the first time that Mrs McCurk-Bride's allowances have been questioned. As early as 2007, mm -hmm. a local radio presenter on BBC Hereford and Worcester questioned her about them in a phone interview. Just have a quick listen to this. Uh, while you're on the line, I've been trying to ask you for uh, some time now about uh, your second housing allowance, uh, because uh, you're married to an MP, a very unusual situation, but it uh, appears that you and your husband are both claiming your full second housing allowance, uh, £44,000. Uh, I thought the old adage, two could live as cheaply as one, uh, would uh, apply here. Obviously, it doesn't. <laughs> I once um, had to speak to Victoria Beckham, posh spicy she was then, on the radio, on the phone. Yeah. For some reason, at the end of the interview, I had to ask her what her favourite record of the moment was. And I said, so, finally, uh, what is your favourite record of the moment? And she said something like, oh, I love you. It was some kind of, it could have been by anyone. And I said, bye. And she went, bye, and put the phone down. <laughs> And obviously this has all rebounded very badly on MPs. Uh, does anyone want to see Margaret Beckett on Question Time? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Let's have a look at this. Margaret Beckett, you've been fingered a bit by the Telegraph. Um, so <laughs> yeah, um... <laughs> That's meant to be the upmarket show. <laughs> <laughs> Who else isn't stepping down? Uh, Hazel Bliss. Hazel Bliss, Hazel Bliss that's Bliss, right. Yeah. She's paid the money back. Yes. <laughs> well, we can see her not standing down here. You heard the Prime Minister's spokesperson this morning uh, actually say the Prime Minister had full confidence in me. He thought I was doing a great job as Secretary of State, uh, and I'll be carrying on doing exactly that, doing my job. Uh, it is unacceptable behaviour, and she has accepted it is unacceptable behaviour. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, owners of this sweet shop in Leicestershire have found a way of expressing <coughs> their disapproval. <laughs> <laughs> uh, setting the bar even higher, Richard Graham, who isn't even an MP yet, mm. uh, has already made his mark, um, had to apologise for his behaviour. Anyone know what he has done, the Tory hopeful for Gloucester, this no. week? Oh, no. he, he... After, you know, a couple of large ones one evening, he decides to sit down and write his blog. He called some Labour guy in his constituency... I can't say this the, word. The C word. The C word. Mm. A conservative. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. I think he meant the four-letter version <laughs> Tory. <laughs> I think he said it was late at night. I'd meant to say that he was a councillor. <laughs> Which is an easy mistake to make. <laughs> His, uh, his views on uh, expenses. He wrote that constituents wish to see some honesty and hard work from their <laughs> this... They've misspelt there. I know, that really <laughs> is. <laughs> well, he can't possibly be an MP. He's a massive councillor, whatever he <laughs> is. <laughs> Uh, yes, this is the historic <laughs> resignation of Speaker Michael Martin, who nobly fell on his sword after 650 MPs pushed him onto it. <laughs> Michael Martin rose to one of the highest posts in the land from humble origins, having started out as a sheet metal worker. He wasn't that much <laughs> better as a speaker, to be honest. <laughs> There were further revelations about MPs' expenses this week. A number of political careers are now doomed, although The Telegraph featured three MPs who've made no claims at all on second homes. All, interestingly, Lib Dems, so their political careers were doomed anyway. <laughs> was it one of those people, Wayne Rooney? <clears throat> hey, what? Was it one of those people, Wayne Rooney? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have had him down as a Lib Dem. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Paul and Reg, there's a sound clue for you, so listen carefully and sound see if you clues. can tell me what it is. OK, here it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is that it? That's it. Wow, it could be a lot of things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a uh, Trappist monk catching his finger in the door. <laughs> <laughs> It could be Victoria Beckham listing her great character traits. <laughs> <laughs> what does no. it play just nothing? What the this hell is, is the hum, mm. isn't it? it the is. hum. Can you hear the hum? No. There. <laughs> some, people, some people can't hear it, but there, there's a lot a of hum. people have now said that all the time in their lives there's yes. this 
underlying drone going on in the background, <laughs> which I assumed was Neil Kinnock. Which <laughs> <laughs> is exactly like central heating, a barrier, or the fridge. Sounds like a distant idling diesel engine, apparently. Disturbs thousands of people around the world, causing sleeplessness and headaches. Was this the number two story of the week? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, it, it can't be. David Baguli is a very well-regarded scientist and he's done a lot of research into yes. this. And he's come to the conclusion that many of the sufferers are oversensitive. <laughs> Our hearing is especially acute at times of danger, he says, and Baguli says hum sufferers are switched on all the time. However, he also says it may be a fridge. <laughs> what can you do to stop the hum? Unplug the, the fridge. fridge. <laughs> I think no-one can stop the hum. That's the... No one, no one can stop the hum. Stop the, hum. <laughs> the, uh, the hum... The hum's been around for, for years. It um, sounds like a really bad action hero. Yeah. It's the hum. <laughs> <laughs> Turns up and hums you to death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the incredible hum. Yeah. You wouldn't like him when he's bored. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but the hum has been around for an awfully long time. Uh, in the 70s, it was known as... Does anyone know? The Bristol nothing, hum. What about the hum has been around for a long time. <laughs> in the, the 70s, hum. it was known as uh, George Whittaker. <laughs> <laughs> it was known as the hum in was, the 70s. It was the Bristol hum. Roger Whittaker. The Bristol, the Bristol the hum. Dance. Everybody yeah. do the Bristol hum. That was... Uh, it was a dance, wasn't it? was it? a dance, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure it was, yeah. <laughs> It was the Bee Gees. 800 people in, in the city of Bristol were claiming they could hear the hum. Hawaii had a bad case of the hum once. <laughs> Have you ever experienced the hum, Reg? You... I'm hearing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I smoked the joint earlier, so... <laughs> <laughs> this is the most ludicrous, <laughs> thinnest story we've ever been asked to contemplate. <laughs> Have you just made this up? No. No evidence at all of anything. No pictures of people, no anything. Just, oh, the hum, the hum. What was it known in the 70s? The Bristol hum. <laughs> what was it known in 1643? Yee hum. <laughs> what a load of nonsense. It's like a low-budget 1950s horror movie. The exactly. Home. The yeah. set's low-budget enough. The question shouldn't be low-budget as well. <laughs> what, uh, what comforting words did the Daily Mail science editor have to say about it this week? Did it the... say the hum will not affect property prices? Because <laughs> <laughs> that would be a big comfort. Uh, no, he said some hum victims are clearly lunatics. <laughs> Dr. David Baguli, an audiology expert. <laughs> you like saying that, don't you? At least he hasn't got a made up name or anything. <laughs> Dr. Baguli. Uh, <laughs> you so like saying that name, don't Dr. you? Dr. David Baguli, an audiology expert, claims that most cases of the hum can be tracked down to a specific source. It may just be a piece of industrial heavy machinery that needs to be switched off. Like, say, Eamon Holmes's fridge. <laughs> The persistent and repetitive humming noise has driven thousands of people mad around the world. In fact, Norway's already adopted it as their next Eurovision entry. <laughs> Dr. Baguli's theory is that the hum comes from the activity of busy factories and local industries. So that's one problem Gordon Brown does seem to be solving. <laughs> uh, so at the end of that round, the scores are Paul and Reg on nothing and Ian Stewart on four. <laughs> Thank you, <Mr>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so on to round two, and it's the one-armed bandit of news, fingers on buzzers teams. Here's the first one. <laughs> They've banned oh, gnomes from the Chelsea Flower Show because they keep humming in the bushes and people don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> they blame it on Battersea Power Station over the river and said, well, there's a big piece of machinery, it must be that. And somebody said, no, Battersea Power Station was actually decommissioned in 1982, so it must be some garden gnomes hiding in the bushes, which is against the Chelsea Flower Show. <laughs> um... <laughs> They have been banned for some time from the Chelsea Flower Show. Oh. Who is Jekka McVicker and what has she done? Is she the gardener who put him in there? That's right. She's on the ruling council of the Royal Horticultural Society and a 61 times gold medal winner. She has dared to put her gnome called Borage into her herb gardener. Uh, what did the RHS say about this? <laughs> well, you know, it's got to go before the judging begins. To which Jekka McVicker responded, Borage will not be taken away. <laughs> what did Jekka McVicker do? Took him away? Yeah. <laughs> She said, I'm being judged by the Fruit, Vegetable and Herb Committee. They're a very hard line. <laughs> yes. What was unique about this display at Chelsea? It, it was made out of plasticine. That's right. Yeah, two and a half tonnes of it, to be precise. Mm. But it uh, wasn't awarded a main competition medal, sadly. Oh, really? Because uh, apparently it fell foul of the requirement to include real plants. Yeah. <laughs> so. They're real sticklers, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. The Chelsea Flower Show yeah. these days, yeah. Very narrow view of what a flower well, actually is. 
He was awarded a gold medal made out of plasticine, though, which I think was the... That was the judge's way of saying, piss off. But, uh, <laughs> who else received an award at the Chelsea Flash Show this week? Uh, Prince Charles. That's right, yes. Do you know what he got? Uh, he was given an award by his mother. Yes. Uh, what else has he been trying his hand at uh, this week? Prince Charles. Oh, Brick Lane. That's right, oh. yes, there we are. We've got a picture of him doing some oh, yes. Brick Lane. Unfortunately, he turned up in the wrong clothes, though, and uh, he damaged his suit. There we are. Oh, oh dear. Yes. Should we have a whip round? <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the male, the prince, also suffers from back problem, uh, from years of polo. <laughs> a lot of bricklayers get that, I think. <laughs> In her column in the Daily Express, Anne Widdicombe slammed the organisers of the Chelsea Flower Show, saying it could only happen in Britain. Well, spotted Anne, that's where Chelsea generally is. <laughs> what kind of people read the Express? <laughs> Does it have, uh, you know, naked women in it and stuff like no. that? No. No, it's owned by a pornographer, um, but he keeps the naked women for other publications. <laughs> He's got a big publication called Counselor. I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> The organisers of the Chelsea Flower Show don't allow any brightly coloured gnomes into the show, which led to an embarrassing incident when, for a brief moment, Hazel Blears stood still for a photograph. <laughs> uh, so, fingers on buzzers, teams. Here we go. <laughs> Paul this, and Reg. Um, this is just one of the many sort of... Uh, because we've come to the time now where 80s pop groups have looked with great nostalgia and several of them have reformed recently with great success. ABC, I think, and Spandau Ballet. What were they called? Kajagooju? Kajagooju. They didn't have many hits, did they? They had a couple, I think. Well, yeah, what yeah, were their but, hits? But I like oh, it, don't like say it. you don't remember. Too Shy Too Shy. shy. Oh, hush, yeah! Hush, too shy, shy. That's the one. Too shy, shy. Too shy, shy. Too shy, shy. Too shy, shy. Yeah, I remember that song there, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. There was no one called Big Apple, I think, wasn't there? Yeah. So that's not a very long concert, then? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> main virtue, I think. <laughs> um, <clears throat> <laughs> yes, according to Nimal, the lead singer, the band is ready for a new career. Back in the 80s, we didn't have time to enjoy things. I imagine you didn't, in between all the hits. <laughs> you wrote for the NME, didn't you? I did, yeah. You, you coined the phrase Britpop, I believe. Yes, I did, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's very impressive. And apparently you started... I don't know if this is true. Do you start the rumour about um, Bob Holmes playing the saxophone in, I... in Baker Street? Yeah, I did. I but mean, the, the song yeah. Baker Street, not the underground. Not the not underground street, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we used to run a, I used to run a, a bit of the paper called Believe It or Not, where I made, you know, a parody of those kind of amazing... <laughs> the Great Wall of China can be seen from the moon and things like mm. that. And, you know, Swan can break your arm. So I just made pop, pop facts up as a pastor and said that Bob Holmes played the saxophone solo on Baker Street, which has passed into... You know, people go to me in pubs <laughs> now and say, it. here... You know, I play sax on Baker Street, and, uh, yeah, I, I invented, that was the only one that caught on. I said that David Bowie invented Connect Four. <laughs> <laughs> I said that Neil Tennant of the Pet Shop Boys was a fully qualified rugby league referee. <laughs> oh, I believe that. There's believe... something about the Bob Holness one which... That's it, I know. It sounds as if it could be right. And for fans of music trivia, it, it, it wasn't him on Baker Street. It was the Krypton Factor's Gordon Burns. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, what has Sir Jimmy Savile found this week? His chair. That's right. Yeah. That, that's a recent picture, isn't it? Yeah. Which, Some people yeah. think he's a weirdo, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> yes, well, this is the momentous news that Kajagoogoo are to reform after 25 years. The band are already planning to start touring again, according to lead singer Limal. When you get to our age, you realise life is not a rehearsal. Well, in your case, perhaps a little more of it should have been. <laughs> The band looks very different nowadays, although bass player Nick Begg still sports ponytails and has marker pens scrawled on his arms. He told the mirror, I get funny looks on the school run. Maybe you should get some kids. <laughs> so, fingers on buzzers, teams. And here we go. Is it the question about Pringles? <laughs> Wait, is there, is, is there always one? <laughs> Everyone's no, always, always one. <laughs> Actually, I do know what this question is. I've just remembered. They've done some research into ducks. The government has conducted... Um, <laughs> they, <laughs> it, it's about no. whether they like water or not. Ducks? What? Yeah. That, that has happened, yes. They did some research, yes, about whether ducks what like did, water. They and they it? did. Is yeah. that the right answer? No, it's not, it's not. But, um, <laughs> well, this is the earth-shattering news that a stork in Hungary has been given a new artificial beak after damaging the original. So what happened to his old beak? 
I mean, he broke it in flight. They seem to they think he, he might have uh, flown into a wall. <laughs> the stork. The stork might what, have... What happened to the baby? <laughs> Oh, that's a big Aye. conversation now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was another story about birds having troubles with flight this week. Yeah, so the mockingbirds, wasn't there? The mocking. Is it about the mockingbirds? No, birds? it wasn't. I'm afraid about that. No. <laughs> There's a story this week of a banker in America who rescued some doomed ducklings. Have a quick look at this. That's nice. Ah. <laughs> to be fair, he's the one throwing them up there. <laughs> How you get him to do that? How you get him to jump one at a time? Everybody queue up. The Chinese Rick. restaurant is this way. <laughs> Raymond, I told you about that cutting and pushing. Stand back. <laughs> the duck saviour, Joel Armstrong, is a banker by profession and was keen to remove the duck family from the high ledge so he could jump off it himself. <laughs> <clears throat> this is the Hungarian bird hospital which has given an injured stork a new artificial beak. In ancient mythology, it was the stork that flew through the sky, bringing a new baby to someone's home. These days, that job is done, of course, by the pilot of Madonna's private jet. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. Your four are Bear Grylls, Nick Griffin, Peter Duncan, and Lieutenant Colonel Arthur Herbert Tennyson Summers Cox. <laughs> There's a link here, scouting. Yes. Bear Grylls yes. has become the new chief scout. Alan Duncan... Um, Alan Duncan, Peter Duncan. Peter Duncan. <laughs> Alan, Alan Duncan. Duncan would be a great chief scout. Yeah. He would. <laughs> Bob a job round his house. Yeah. <laughs> All on expenses. <laughs> anyway, he was chief scout. Who's they... that fella called? No, Arthur what? Lieutenant... Arthur Herbert Tennyson Summers Cox, I think he Terrific was. name. He was <laughs> chief scout. Nick Griffin's the fascist who's BMP <laughs> chief mm. who's trying to get himself invited to a got, yeah. Buckingham Palace garden party. Yes. That's not work, because when he gets to the door, and they go, well, hang on. Oh, yeah. Xenophobic right-wing nutcase. <laughs> no, we got one of those already, actually, mate. <laughs> <laughs> He's the odd one out. Yes. Because the others were all chief scout. Mm-hmm. What are the BNP doing? Are they trying to set up a youth movement? That's exactly right. Are yeah. they really? They are, really? yes. They're running weekend training camps that involve shooting, self-defence and nationalist ideology. Right. <laughs> Nick Griffin has not been Chief Scout, but he does have a keen interest in the BNP's own youth movement. Uh, what else is the BNP doing to lure in even younger children? Oh, cartoon strips? Yes. No. They've produced... <laughs> no. Yeah, really? they, they have produced a comic called The Comet, which, according to The Sun, features a venom-spouting racist puppet called Billy Britt. And uh, we, we have a clip of Billy Britt. In AD 20 was born a queen. Boudicca was her name, but then one day from across the sea, some mean old Romans came. They took her land and beat her kids, and that just was not right. So she fought and died for freedom, and Boudicca was white. <laughs> Pixar have gone really downhill, haven't mm. they? <laughs> And why else has Nick Griffin been in the news this week? He's, uh, he's, he's wangled an invitation to the Queen's garden party. Yeah, that's right. By uh, being invited by somebody else. Another BNP councillor. <laughs> Sounds like they'll be at the perfect party, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm guessing there's not going to be a whole lot of black folk there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, I think you'd find some there. Working. <laughs> <laughs> Let that man go to the party, man. Just let that man go. That don't make no big deal. Nobody don't care. Well, it, it's part of the problem that, that councillors are allowed to go and they're allowed to invite someone. Yeah. And they were elected. I mean, as bad as it may sound, discrimination is bad, even against racists. It's just discriminatory. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to let him go, man. You got to let him go. Because then, you know, if you don't let him go, then he's going to be mad. And then he's going to feel like the reason he can't go is the fault of blacks and Asians. And he's going to go back and take it out on them. Mm. He's going to throw a garden party and he ain't going to let none of them come. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, what if, what if we all threw garden parties and then invite each other? That, what kind of world is that? What kind of world is that? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yes, they have all been chief scouts, apart from Nick Griffin, whose BNP have their own youth movement. In one issue of the BNP publication, The Rune, Nick Griffin called the Holocaust the Holo Hoax. I think you'll find uh... that's, a, that's a Channel 4 soap opera. I think you'll find that, Nick. <laughs> There are now 30,000 young people on the waiting list to become scouts due to a national shortage of scout leaders. I blame that bloody register. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the missing words round, and we start with... Nobody move, I've what? I've finally got to meet my neighbours, and they're quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody move, I've got a banana. A teenager attempted to rob an internet cafe with a banana. The customers were terrified, as none of them had seen a piece of fruit before. <laughs> <laughs> Next, bad news, men what? Men die. <laughs> it's a rather sad bit of news. You bad can't... news, men are on the road to extinction. <laughs> this is the news that the male Y chromosome is dying out and that men will be extinct in five million years' time. <laughs> Oh, so we better get all that partying in before it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby, I ain't got but five million years. <laughs> also this week, complaints about an advert that made men look silly have not been upheld. Let's just have a quick look at some adverts from the days when it was OK to make women look silly. Have you the time for all your bits on the side? <laughs> that doesn't make her look silly. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a woman can open it? <laughs> The chef does everything but cook. That's what wives are for. <laughs> <laughs> Is this chiming with your worldview? <laughs> no, man, I just, but I just found it naturally funny hearing things that you can't say to women, because uh, I accidentally do that a lot. Do you? you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are Ian and Stuart have five, and Paul and Reg have three. Oh, God. Stuart has given me a very good... Well And I leave you with news that, after several months recuperating in the Caribbean, Amy Winehouse is looking better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> and at the French Embassy, Nicolas Sarkozy claims another victim with his whoopee cushion. <laughs> Good night. We're going to have to do it again because you did that. <laughs> well, to be fair, that's how I got on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. More comedy with Lee Mack and Sean Locke live at the Apollo now over on BBC Three. But coming up here on BBC Two, a sleepwalking youth, a scary six-foot rabbit and a crashing 747. Comedy with a psycho edge for Donnie Darko. Next. That's how you do it. <laughs> Oh, I nearly killed me. <laughs>